Stella's sea cow lived around the Commander Islands in the Bering Sea between Alaska and Russia. First encountered by the German explorer George Wilhelm Stella when his party became shipwrecked on the Bering Island in 1741. Initially believed to have been hunted to extinction for the taste of their flesh, described by Stella as beef marinated in almond oil. It is now understood that the 8 to 10 ton gentle giant of northern waters was actually starved out of existence due to the sea otter fur trades. As demand for the pelt of the sea otter increased, their numbers in the wild decreased. From their initial finding in 1740s, a total of 8,226 sea otters were harvested. Only 25 of the sea-going mammals were killed after 1753. One of the staples in the sea otter's diet is sea urchin. As numbers of the sea otters decreased, the population of sea urchins increased. Sea urchins live at the bottom of the sea, feeding on delicious kelp, which, coincidentally, is what sea cows eat. While sea urchins can remain underwater indefinitely, thereby making their feeding ground extremely vast, Stella's sea cow could only hold their breath for approximately five minutes, thereby making their feeding area extremely narrow in comparison. With the dramatic population growth of sea urchins, kelp, that was once plentiful, suddenly became scarce, forcing the sea cow to be starved out of existence. The largest of the sea cows may not have been driven to extinction directly by hunters. Rather, the ignorant actions of settlers seeking their fortune in the wild frontier that has driven out Stella's sea cow forever. It is only in recent times that modern civilization is coming to collectively recognize the huge impact that subtle changes to an ecosystem can have on all life. Nature was always believed to be simple, like the way a stream will always take the path of least resistance. We are now just starting to understand the Cognitive workings of sentient life can be quite complex, regardless of how simple a species might appear. A wood wasp will fly through smoke and fire to find a particular piece of cedar, foregoing all other pieces of wood in order to lay their eggs. Eels in the Thames will spend twenty years of their life in the United Kingdom before making an astonishing 4,000-mile voyage to the Sargasso Sea to spawn. The Georgians and the Victorians gave us a view of nature that was simple and uncomplicated. I am hungry, so I eat. I am horny, so I will have sex. But the real-world stories that have unfolded before us, visible by ongoing scientific observation, and the Nouveau images brought by social media of people with their adopted animal companions can show how attached and interwoven all sentient life can be. The bonds that are formed can be incredibly strong, as observed by Stella himself and his crew when interacting with the monogamous mammals. When one would be harpooned, the others would rush to its aid and try to capsize the boat with their backs, sever the rope, or even attempt to remove the hooks with blows from their tails. And, in instance of a bull's partner being towed away, he would even follow his mate all the way to the shore, even with the crew delivering him many aggressive blows. There are many stories of species rebounding in the wild after being driven to the brink. And, in the case of red-tailed kites, members of the public had become so excited at their return that they would leave raw animal flesh out for the medium-large birds of prey to feast upon. 
subsequently feeding the local Rodian population in the process. And, more recently, white-tailed eagles have been spotted soaring above after people were encouraged to kill them in the late 18 and early 1900s. We may find it easy to mourn the loss of a species due to the actions of our ancestors and celebrate the return of others who are on the brink of extinction. It can be, however, quite another thing to reflect on our own actions in the present to see how they might endanger the lives that we may take for granted as a growing number of people place nets over bushes and trees, preventing small birds from nesting, or tearing up front gardens so to have a larger drive, and housing developers building on natural floodplains. Fellow mammals like squirrels and hedgehogs may be common sight at present, but, much like the fate of Stella's sea cow, direct and deliberate actions are not always what brings about the end. Thank you for listening. Feel free to leave a comment or a question down below. Remember to click the subscribe button and to press the appropriate thumb.